Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this edition of Eyeing the Dream. Today we are in Washington DC and we bring you the story of a Kenyan who is selling traditional vegetables to the American market. Welcome and enjoy the conversation. This is uh, Eyeing the Dream. Uh, maybe you can tell us more about yourself before we go into the details of how you eye your dream. Okay. Thanks a lot for hosting me on this important program. My name is Kenneth Kibisu. I'm a Kenyan, uh, born and raised in Kenya, studied in Kenya. Uh, but um, I came to the US four years ago after also staying in UK and, uh, and uh, Denmark. And so this is kind of my other uh, country that I've stayed outside Kenya. And uh, I came here in 2019, just before the epidemic. Um, we moved as a family because of work. Okay, so I hear here in the USA there is a lot of junk food. Yes, yes, there's a lot of junk food and that's what re I encountered. Um, and I was wondering how I'd be able to survive without my ugali, which I'm used to back in Kenya, because I was so much used to fresh and kind of food from Kenya and uh, quite organic. Uh, but here it seemed to be a bit different with a lot of uh, GMO food. But more important is there's a lot of junk food uh, which didn't auger well for me. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so maybe tell us about uh, the initiatives you are doing in, in order to bridge the, the, the gap. Um, I've always been an entrepreneur and uh, whenever I go anywhere I think of what I can be able to do either for business or just to kind of uh, help. So one of the things I realize about food here is that um, we have very nutritious food back in Kenya, especially uh, in western part of Kenya. We have the likes of managu, we have the likes of saga, we have the likes of miro, uh, which are quite nutritious and which when you are here you miss a lot. Somebody either has to travel to Kenya to bring them here or you have once in a while when you travel you bring them here and that costs a lot of effort. So I thought of a way in which I could be able to fill that gap through entrepreneurship but also uh, killing two, ba two, two birds with the same stone. Helping the farmers back in Kenya so that their uh, pro produce can be marketed but to helping people who are outside the country and would like to benefit from these nutritious vegetables uh, so that they can access them quite easily without a lot of um, having to wait or having to, to do a lot of uh, uh, waiting from Kenya. Yes, yeah, so how do these vegetables come to the US? So just recently we were FDA approved and that meant, and KEBS approved, that meant that um, we have the certification to be able to import them in large quantities. Um, so right now as we talk, we have uh, the first batch that just arrived through DHL. And, and is here. So this is being marketed and uh, being sold but the effort, the main effort is to see that it goes to Amazon and through Amazon it can be distributed to any part of USA, all these 54 states. Okay, maybe wait a minute, I need to understand that because uh, let's t talk about like uh, Managu for instance. Yes. The way I know about it is uh, my mother will go to the farm, plant mm -hmm. it, Mm -hmm. come and cook it when they are still green or sk uh, still fresh. So how will these uh, vegetables uh, get to the U.S. Uh, still green and fresh? Okay, so one of the things we discovered and which also has happened back home is that managu can also be dried. Uh, it, at, back at home it can be sun dried or it can be, um, it can be smoked and with that it can be able to stay longer, it, it has a longer sh uh, life shelf. Uh, but for this particular project, we went further to do equipment for solar drying. So when the veggies are plucked from the farm, they are dried through solar and processed uh, through solar, uh, solar mechanism. And then they are bottled, they are put in jars. And then from there, they are exported to USA. So they come dried, but uh, in jars with that ad value added. Um, with that value addition that has been made to them. Okay, so what is your target market? The target market is uh, majorly the Africans in the diaspora, beginning with the Kenyans, 
uh, who are in the diaspora. So that's our initial market. But we know when other people test it and they know it's good, they will also pick it up. And because of the nutritious value, we will have many other people also picking it up from there. Okay, from the way you are speaking, it appears to me like there are two groups of, of people or two sets of people who will benefit from this project. Uh, so maybe you can expound, like for example, the Africans or your target or, uh, market in the USA, how mm. it's going to benefit, and then also for the farmer back home in okay. Africa or in Kenya, how are okay. they going to benefit from this initiative? Yes, this initiative actually uh, will have a bigger impact to the Kenyan farmer uh, because the initiative intends to have it rolled out first in the entire region of Western Province. So the initial project sites are in Kakamega and Vihiga where we have a warehouse and the a warehouse serves the farmers in the, in, the, in the sense that it's a collection center. So they can come and sell the produce there. Once they sell the produce there, we are able to process it uh, in the, in the uh, warehouse and it comes out as a finished product. However, um, how it, it uh, benefits them is that they, they have a ready market for it and two, it spoils a lot of wastage. Uh, once in a while I go back home and I see people scrambling with these veggies on top of matatus and they end up not selling them and they go to waste. So one of the ways is to the value addition where they can be dried so that they can have a longer life shell as compared to when they are green and uh, quickly perishable. So one of the gaps that has been filled there is that the veggies now can stay longer once they're processed and they are dried. But the other important thing is that the farmer is able to get their cash immediately because when they come to sell to us, they get their cash and we, they are able to plow it back and do much more within their farms as opposed to long time when they would not know where to take it and all of it would go to waste. Um, but apart from that, the farmers are now finding a way to uh, plant more on their farms because when you talk of Linagu, Managu, when you talk of uh, Saga, these are crops you can interplant. You can interplant with other crops, so the, the farms are well utilized and therefore they, it gives them more benefits as from that. The other areas are nutritional, which I will not go so much into, because whenever you consume these veggies, they are quite nutritious and they have been known to be so for a long time. Now the second um, group of people you, talk, you talked about is the one now in the diaspora, who have been probably raised and have been feeding on this and miss it a lot and they did not know how to uh, get it. So right now we have an opportunity to uh, provide it to them very easily. Uh, when they arrive here, they do their orders, they can be able to uh, get them as soon as possible uh, and they can have their delicious food on table. Okay, I think there is maybe a third group of people who are benefiting and maybe you can tell me whether that is possible. Uh, do you have employees back home? Yes, yes, because uh, to process this vegetable and even to supply the, the bottles and even the equipment that is being used, all this require workers. Um, so ordinarily we have always have between 50 and 100 people working on this project back at home who benefit directly from it and uh, they are majorly uh, from the village, also giving employment to our, our villagers in the back at home in Kenya. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, for people who are at home, because I know now um, uh, maybe there is somebody who has planted ma managu or sukumawiki or kunde or murenda. What is your message to them? So this one we are targeting the traditional vegetable. So we have not yet started so much on sukuma, but we are on saga, we are on murenda, we are on miro, we are on managu. Uh, and other traditional veggies. So these are the ones that we are encouraging them to plant. And um, uh, when, we are, when we have the whole program rolled out, we will be able to go to them and pick it from where they are. Or we'll be able to enroll them with us so that when the crop is ready, we will guide them through the entire process of bringing up very healthy kind of vegetable that meets the international market. Uh, so we will go to them so that we can be able to do that. Uh, however, the one that is already being produced, 
we were funded by USAID and we had a pilot project which uh, we were able to do about 10 acres and from the acres it's what we are now reaping and harvesting ready to be to be sold but the next phase will be an expansion phase which will uh, roll out to the entire of western province and we will go to people we will give them the extension services they require to do it the right is to be able to do it and then we will work with them to be able to uh, harvest and take them to their warehouses for processing okay yeah so i'm encouraging them that they be ready to avail the produce so that we can be able to help them get the market okay you know i heard that you are selling vegetables the only thing about i know about vegetables is that somebody has a stall where you are an vibunde vibunde then mm -hmm. so yeah. this one so viewers how are you selling them we sell them in jars and they are well packeted for the market so this is the type of mark jar that they they are put in so we have the flexibility of adjusting the net uh the, the net grams on it uh, for now we are doing 60 grams but um, there is that possibility that we can make it bigger or smaller depending on the requirements of the market um, so we, yes we do package them and then uh, this can be able and since they are dry they can be able to stay longer on the life shell for quite some time before they go approximately one year so this should be able to give them a good time to sell or to be kept in their houses so for somebody who is in the usa and he wants to consume these vegetables how will they get to that person for now um, i'm directly working with them they can be able to get uh, me through my number which is 914-498-4590 um, or through my email uh, kenkibisu at yahoo.com but the biggest chunk of the project which is coming we will be doing this on on um, amazon so all the produce that comes will go to amazon and they can be able to do their order from there so right now it is still at the uh, test run pro uh, project and uh, i'm still handling it but in a few months time we are going to see things turn around in the sense that the market will be bigger and we'll be able to uh, get them to them through Amazon okay. as a provider, yes. Okay, I've been in the U.S. for some time now and I know these vege uh, vegetables go very well with the ugali. Yes. But for the time I've been here, I've not seen a portion meal. So where will these guys be getting <laughs> unga to yeah, accompany this? The, the good thing about um, uh, the U.S. is it's quite diverse. The Mexicans have an environment just like we have in Africa. So they have corn and they have uh, corn flour. The corn flour is much more of what you see in Kenya as unga. So here, if you go to any Mexican store or if you go to any African store, you can be able to get the, that, that type of unga. It may not necessarily be what we find in Kenya, but it's so close to it. However, I'm told in some states, Kenyans also bring in the unga and you can write from home, jogo and the other types. So they can actually be able to access that. So um, they should stay put that they can be able to access it. And um, if they need the link, we can always uh, arrange to make them know where some of these stores are. But definitely unga is available, uh, though a different type of test, but um, from Mexico. Yeah, so for Kenyans who are in the USA and maybe for Africans for that particular matter, what is your message to them? I encourage them to come and utilize these veggies. Remember, as I said, they are very healthy in terms of um, some of them have been said to, um, to reduce cases of diabetes. Some of them have been said to uh, um, give, I mean, in terms of pl plasma, increase of plasma, and those are the things that um, can actually be able to help a lot. Some of them have been also touted to help preventing cancer. Uh, I don't have any information on that, but that's what has been said. So you, they have an opportunity to be able to access them right from here now. They don't have to wait until they travel to Kenya. They just need to make a phone call and they'll be able to receive them. But even as they buy them, they should remember that they are helping their brothers and sisters back at home because this is the effort they put in to ensure that they are able to plant and supply. And uh, once you buy 
from us, we are also enabling the market to grow back at home for them to plant more and also access some resources. So we're definitely eradicating poverty back at home. So any Kenyans, any Africans who would like to promote their brothers and sisters, uh, ensure that you are in touch with me, ensure that you buy some of the products we are bringing uh, for the sake of the, our brothers and sisters back at home. Okay, you talked about um, getting the necessary approvals in the U.S. because I know U.S. they are very strict on regulations. Yes. How was the process? Uh, it is tedious, but however, as you can see, we managed it. It just requires that you put the right paper in place. And uh, that is also in conjunction with the Kenyan paperwork. So CABS helped us a lot and they moved fast on it. And then uh, the FDA also uh, picked it up because we had already that uh, approval from CABS. So in as much as it takes longer, but you are very sure that it would happen, especially if it is not, nothing that would be uh, vindictive or it, anything illegal, it should be able to be processed. And that's how we are here with this wages now, approved by FDC, ready to go to the U.S. market. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you've talked about uh, the different kinds of vegetables. Yes. You've talked of managu, morenda, mito, kune, yes. all of them. Uh -huh. Are all, the, all of them now available in the USA or are you rolling them out in phases? We are rolling them out in phases. The first box came with Managu and uh, that's what is selling at the moment. In the next one week we are also expecting the Miro Saga and, uh, uh, Miro Saga and, and Murenda also to follow suit. So they are all, we just dispatched the first box and then the others are also coming on the way. So they, they should be available in, uh, in the next one week, available in the course of this new year. Okay, and then you've talked about funding. So if there is somebody out there who wants to partner with you, what would be your message to that person? This is a huge market because you, as you can see, we, uh, we'd like to roll out to Vihiga and we'd like to roll out in the entire of Western region. Uh, rolling out to be able to ensure that we meet that market it, it's a, a huge cost that's one area we can be able to partner with them back at home and they roll out ensuring that we have either additional warehouses so that the mothers don't have to wait for long or they once the farmers don't have to wait for long uh, and the equipment that we are also installing is quite expensive for example the one we got for solar we bought it in Germany and it's quite expensive so um, as we roll out, those are some of the areas that we, we would need partnership uh, back at home. But for here, uh, it's just the supply chain where we require anybody who thinks they can be able to do anything parallel to Amazon. They have their store, which they can be able to uh, have it as an outlet for the produce. Then they are welcome and we can partner with them to do it. Okay. Yeah. But for the majority of them, is just patronize the products, make sure you use them regularly, then you'll be helping the entire program to grow as well. Okay, so let's talk about the cost, because somebody will be asking how much uh, is that, that does that cost, what is the quantity, uh, mm. and how will you get the money? Um, so we, we have done our research and um, we, we, we kept going up and down, but for now we have settled in terms of eight dollars per jar uh, which is really minimal in terms of the profit we make out of it but we also don't want to make it look so expensive until people can be able to access it but at the same time we need also to pay back the farmers whatever they got uh, from it so uh, at the moment this is what we have but when amazon comes in they probably the, the prices are likely to go a little higher because of that process of having to ferry them from one place to the other. So, um, but so far in terms of the cost, we are within the limits of production and, um, and therefore we are able to make a little bit of profit out of each jar we sell. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe in terms of quantities, uh, because yes. I know uh, sometimes uh, people say that the amount of ugali you'll, uh, you'll eat will yeah. depend on the amount of vegetables you yes. have. Yes. So these ones here, if like for example I buy this, how many people will consume this? So on a practical example, when you soak this and expands, it is, a, it is able to feed five people in a sitting. And um, 
it will remain. Remember they are dried so they've just shrunk. But when you want to cook them, you uh, soak them in water and they immediately bulk. So they'll be able to fill up like a bigger container. So when we did our research, we realized that this can be able to comfortably feed five people in a sitting, a family of five comfortably. Uh, and uh, even we'll have some re remains if, <laughs> if, it, if possible. Okay. However, um, if you're a bigger family, then you probably may need to purchase more. If you want to eat it for longer, then you can purchase more of the jars from us. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe you'd say that uh, this jar, it will depend on the size of ugali you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what some people say, but you know, you can, you may have the ugali and not finish the whole of it. <laughs> you can also eat part of it and you still have a lot of veggies remaining. So, yeah, that's debatable. Yeah. But for now, what we know and research we've done, uh, this is uh, capable of feeding a family of five comfortably and they will not be able to complain at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe as we conclude, uh, what would be your parting shot? My parting shot is that um, there are many projects that people think about, but to bring them to success, one needs to put in a lot of effort, a lot of thinking, a lot of finances. This is one of the ones that we have thought of that will be able to make a big difference for the Luya community. They have a lot of resources. Some of these grow naturally in their farms, but they are, they are not able to make a lot of money out of it. So we are giving them a challenge that now we are creating a market for you. Just make sure you produce and you'll have cash in your hands. So instead of um, having to cry that you cannot be able to make ends meet, we have a big opportunity to exploit our fertile lands, uh, our rainy uh, areas in western province, our um, good roads that we can be able to access them and pick them from you use that as an opportunity to give us this produce and we will be able to ensure that the poverty that the low level the high levels of poverty we are seeing in western province are elevated so ensure that if you are able to plant any of them be it managu be it suza saga plant them so that we can come and pick them from you and we will help you in terms of ensuring that you have all the tools to make it work Okay, and then finally, you gave us your USA contacts. I don't know whether you have a contact in Kenya. If, for example, a farmer wants to contact you or somebody in Kenya related to this project. Yes, so uh, as I said, I partner with a, a colleague, a business colleague called uh, James Shikwati Shikuku. He's based in Kenya, and he's the one who is doing the, all the groundwork to ensure that uh, the farmers uh, get the seeds that they require. Uh, they get the harvest is taken all the way to the warehouse and and all that so he can also be reached I'll probably put uh, His number on the end of the clip so that he can be able to be accessed and even his email Yeah, okay. so yes, so we have a partner back in Kenya who, who I work with who is very resourceful in that Okay, mm -hmm. I think for me. I want to thank you for this initiative and I dare want to speak on your behalf, the uh, Kenyans in diaspora. Mm -hmm. Just contact Ken here for the vegetables. Mm -hmm. At least you need to have ugali for your dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. exactly. And then for the farmers back home, now you have your market. You have no reason for not planting vegetables. So Ken, maybe you can conclude. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who has made this a success. The, if My effort has always been to make a difference in people's lives and this has presented itself so I'd like to thank everybody who has also helped me because I could not have done this alone who has helped me in one way or the other and I'd like to use this opportunity also to ensure that we all benefit from this project together so welcome uh, talk to me anytime call me anytime I'll be able to respond to your questions Okay, Asante Sana, and okay. thanks for the initiative. Uh, shukran Sana, Asante Sana. Asante. Thank you for watching this edition of Eyeing the Dream. If you love our story, kindly like, share, comment, and subscribe to Moving Pictures Kenya. My name is Bonventure, and this is Moving Pictures Kenya, Inspiring Africa. <laughs>